Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to the shop. Router planes are incredibly simple to make and they're a lot of fun. Let's dive in. So this router plane I made about a week ago on a live video where we built the whole thing live. It was about a two and a half hour long video. And a lot of people like that, but they said, hey, can you make a shorter one? Uh, so I'm gonna make a shorter router plane. So for the router plane mechanism on this, I have an iron that came from Rockler. Um, all of the links to these will be down below. There are three of these nuts, a quarter 20 stud that comes down in, and for this I'm just going to use a regular bolt. And then there is a U-bolt, and this will go around it so that I have a place for this stud to go down in between them. So that's all the hardware you need, and there's links to all that down below. For the body, I'm going to make it out of hard walnut, but you can make it out of anything you want. I just happen to have this scrap lying around. It's about an inch thick. If it's a three-quarter inch thick, you'd be perfectly fine. Uh, that's just what we're going to be using today. First things first, let's actually square this up. And uh, the more I've been using this dedicated shooting board plane, the more I absolutely love this. Now we need to figure out a length on the board, um, and I'm gonna make it about the same length as the original router-ish. It really doesn't matter. If you want it to have more registration surface, you make it a little longer. If you want it to have a little less, you make it a little shorter. Then we can cut the blank to length. Uh, this is gonna be about three and a half inches by one inch thick. Um, three quarter inch stock works just as well. And then I need to cut out a small piece for the back. And this will be what the iron then rests against. So I'm gonna grab that same stock, one inch thick, three quarter yeah. inch thick would work perfectly fine for this. Um, I'm gonna rip it down to oh, one inch side. by one inch by about two and a half inches long. And something like that. Cross cut, rip down. So there are the pieces we need. A block that's about one inch by one inch by eh, two and a half inches, something like that. And a block that's about, what? eight inches, seven inches by three, three and a half, maybe four inches by about one inch, three quarter, something like that. Sizes really don't matter. You need a block like this and a block like this and then we can glue them together and do some more work. It will be far easier to shape these pieces now before we glue them. Uh, the one I did live, I made the decision to glue them together and then shape them. Bad choice. Uh, do, them, do them separately and then glue them together. For the, uh, the backstop, I'm actually just going to round the corners a little bit and make them a little bit prettier. Um, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. It's just the, the square rectangular shape wasn't as nice as I would have liked. For quick roundovers and chamfers on small pieces like this, I often find a file is the fastest way to do it, and it comes out pretty well. Next I want to do is figure out where exactly this needs to go in the center, and then shape off what I want this to be. And I want to create a couple rounds and make the ends slightly thinner. It makes it easier to grab for a small piece like this. I don't, I'm not working about the, the long one I had before. This one just needs to be a little more comfortable. Uh, with a tall block like this, I don't like to put knobs on it because then that raises the, the lateral force up too high and you put a lot of leverage on it and it makes it tip easier. Um, so for this, I actually like to grab the bottom, but that means I need to make it a little less blocky and easier to grab. So I'm going to put a uh, sacrificial block on here and drill off these corners and create rounds in the corners. That'll just give me something more to grab. I'm just going to let it blow out here because we're going to be chamfering and cleaning that up a bit more. Then I'm going to hit it with a rasp and uh, round over all of these corners and just make it comfortable to the feel. Um, these simple roundovers work really, really well. Um, but for the last square corner, I'm going to do that with a chisel because it's a little bit uh, larger and so it's... Um, Slightly faster to do it with the chisel than it is with just the rasp. After the rasp, you can hit it with a couple files and then a finer file and a finer file until you get it right down to it. For the large corner on the bottom, it's easier to just chisel off the corner and then you can detail it down with a rasp and or file and it's really, really fast. Uh, very, very simple. All of the corners in this one, I'm just going to round them over. Um, I normally prefer chamfers. However, because I'm keeping these corners rounded um, on the shape, it just is a little more aesthetically pleasing to... Uh, to, to round them all over rather than chamfer them. Then rinse and repeat on the other side and we've got the basic shape of the router. It's a relatively simple thing and you can make this whatever you want. There is no right or wrong way to shape a router. There are thousands and thousands of different designs and styles over the years and you have to see a lot of these that the individual makers made something that fit their own style. So have a little bit of chance to experiment, try something new and play around with it and you might be surprised at what you find and what you find comfortable to you. So just before gluing it back on, I want to make sure that this backrest is exactly where I want it. 
I mark out a few things so after it's glued up, I can set it back in place. I'm going to use some epoxy on here. Um, a five minute epoxy works great when you just want to do it. And this is going to have a bolt that goes through it. So it's, it's really not, there isn't a whole lot of pressure on this. Uh, if you really want to, you could do something different. But in this case, with something small like this, just about any decent glue will do as long as you have enough time to actually work with it. Then we're going to clamp it down in. And the next stop is starting to work on the hardware. We need to put a vertical screw on this for the depth adjuster to go up and down. Now, for the original one, I just got some quarter 20 threaded rod. Um, and it's actually stainless steel quarter 20 threaded rod. Really nice stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have any more of it for the second one, so I'm just going to use a bolt. I'm going to cut the head off and use that instead. Originally, I was going to cut it with the hacksaw, um, but I was out of hacksaw blades, and I thought, wait a second, I got a bolt cutter. And that actually worked really well. I was surprised with how well the bolt cutter worked. We're going to drill out a quarter inch hole for this. On the original one, I actually uh, tapped it out so I could thread it down in there, and that worked great. Um, and I didn't have to use any glue on it for that. And I, I kind of like that method, but I wanted to show a slightly different method. This time we're going to glue it in place. So I'm going to use that exact same epoxy, mix it up, and put it down in there. And it's just some glue and a hole, and it works really, really well. You just want to make sure you get enough down into the hole, and then you get it under the thread so there's a lot in there. The epoxy, particularly for this one, has a really good gap filling, and this will create an incredibly strong bond. Um, you'll have to break this apart to get that out, so it'll, it'll, yeah, it's way stronger than it needs to be. So after we let the epoxy set up, we can take it apart, and the next thing we need to do is drill the escapement, and for that I'm going to use an inch and a half auger bit. Um, you could use something bigger, um, if just depending upon what size you want in there. Uh, a hole saw actually would work very well for this. It'd be a little slower with hand tools, um, but the large auger works very, very well for this. We're going to chamfer out the edge and clean it up. I'm going to just use that with a small carving knife. Uh, nothing special in here, just make it a little prettier. Next, we want to create a spot for the iron to fit into. The iron I have has this square shank, which allows it to fit in there very, very nicely. So I'm going to mark it off with a small square, fit it out to where it needs to be. And then I'm going to use my small coping saw that I made in a live not too long ago. And uh, this will allow me to cut in the two sides of the slot that it will fit down into. And then I can chisel out in between those two slots, and I'll have a space for that router to fit down into. Um, now I made it a little bit smaller than it needed to be so that I can come back and sneak up on it. Um, on the one I had on the, on the live the other day, it was almost a perfect fit. It came out perfectly. Uh, this one I made it uh, a bit too small, and I had to spend a good bit of time chiseling it out. Some of it's easy to chisel out, and some of it's easier to come in with a float or a file just to smooth it out and make it fit a little bit better. So slide the iron in, play with it. I want to make sure it goes back far enough for that to engage. So that means I need to take it down a little bit farther, chisel that out, and then put it back down in. It's kind of a, a game to play back and forth and make it fit because this is probably the most important step of the whole thing. So take it slow, take it bit by bit, and make sure that it is vertical and 90 degrees to the bottom, uh, as well as it needs to have its head at the right distance away from that screw so we, it'll engage with that. For the U-bolt, we drill two quarter inch holes on either side. We can lay it out to find the exact centers of those. If they're not exactly on center, that's not a huge issue, and you might want to make these holes a little bigger than quarter inch. I decided to go with quarter inch just to uh, make sure I get a nice clean hole in there. Clean them out with a rat's tail. And this one is a little bit tight, um, so I, I put the holes in. I think they were just a hair too close together. So I probably could have come in with the rat's tail and cleaned them out a little bit better, but uh, that works out fine. We're going to use a quarter inch chisel and clean out a little bit on this so that the U-shape can fit down in there. It creates a bracket that the iron then will fit into. We can put in two more screws on back and now we can loosen and screw it. And I can actually just do it with one of these at a time to adjust the depth and then clamp them back down. Or I can do it with both and I can do it however I want. It's actually a really nice system and I, I like that. Let's make this thing a little bit prettier and do a little bit of carving on this. I'm going to use my finger as a marking gauge and mark a rough pencil line all the way around this. And I'm just going to do a small V-tool uh, groove running all the way around this. Very quick and easy. Uh, any monkey can do this. If you can follow a line with a pencil, um, you can do this. Just take it easy and slow it down. Light little taps are best and follow your way around this. And you can straighten out the lines and correct your curves and make a really nice line all the way around it. It's a very, very simple technique and it adds so much to it uh, right off the bat like that. 
Then we're going to do all the final little details before we apply the finish. We're scrape off the surface, scrape off any of the pencil marks. And I am going to hit this with uh, some 400 grit sandpaper as well because uh, I want to allow it to soak up a little bit more oil into the, the surface. That means it's going to be a little more blotchy anytime you sand the wood rather than just cutting it. Um, particularly with, uh, with maple like this, it's going to get a little more blotchy in there. And that's okay. I, I like that style. And I really want as much oil into this as possible to, uh, to start the aging process on it. Then we can let it soak in and wipe off the excess, apply a little paste wax, and then we can put it together and give this thing a test run. And uh, tool is only as good as what it actually does. In this case, it's a router. So I cut two parallel lines on a board, and then we can set to depth and come in and remove the waste. And I'm really, really happy with this. It works just like any other high-end router. It chisels out everything in between and goes very, very smoothly. You can see how this just cuts well, like a knife through butter. It is a beautiful surface, and I am really, really happy with how this came out. Lots of fun to use. There you have it. A very, very simple little router plane. Uh, this is probably the eighth or ninth video that I have made on making router planes. I've made you know, dozens of them over the years. They are incredibly simple to make. They are a lot of fun. And it's one of those things where you really don't need to go out and buy one. Yeah, having one of these is nice because it's just, it's simple, it's metal, it doesn't move, it doesn't change. But you can make one like this that's fully functional in a matter of a couple hours with just a saw, a chisel, and an auger bit. It is a very fun little tool and it will serve you very, very well. Also, you could try something like this. If you want to see more detail and actually see it in live and actually going through all the steps and all the mistakes and all the problems that come along, you can go see this. I will link to that down below uh, where you can see making this whole thing live. Um, also, all of the hardware, I have links to that in the description down below, so hop on down there. If you have any questions, let me know. There is a huge comment section down there and I read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. So thank you. So if you do want to help out the channel, commenting, hitting like, and subscribing, and sharing, those things really help out, and thank you for that. Also, if you want to take it a step farther, everyone scrolling over here on the side, they are patrons on Patreon, and they are quite literally keeping this channel going. We are sponsored by you, the viewers, and without that, we wouldn't be here. So if you'd like to find out more about Patreon, you can click the link down below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube, because we have a bunch of special things just for patrons and members. I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The one thing I haven't figured out is how exactly do I connect this to my modem?